Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Williams, and you are listening to Retail Redeveloped. I'm very excited to be joined today by Bobby Marhamet. He is the CEO of Radiant, which is I will let you I will let him tell you a little bit more about what his company does. Uh, but Bobby is an entrepreneur in San Francisco. He built his first company when he was just nine years old. That uh, that I want to hear all about. Uh, today, he dedicates his time to mentoring other entrepreneurs and helping growth-minded individuals accomplish anything. Bobby, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm excited to have you, and uh, I'd love for you to start off by just telling everybody a little bit about kind of what it is you do, the why behind what you do, and, and, and how you got to sit in the seat that you're in now. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Adam. Um, you know, going back, I started, uh, I started my career uh, in retail by accident. Um, you know, I actually graduated computer science, uh, and it was during the time where uh, the economy kind of took a little bit of a shift uh, on the dot-com side and, and uh, started in retail and started to really fall in love with retail. Uh, and with that, you know, it, it's one of those things that you grow within it and you love it more and more and you want to help, you know, the industry kind of flourish. So over time, although I've had different stints and in, uh, in different types of industries, it's always brought me back to the retail and restaurant category. So, um, and, and with that, you know, the, the last company I was associated with, um, Rebel Systems, I was COO there, started with the company when we we're, you know, uh, kind of a tiny, tiny company, less than a few million. We ended up, you know, uh, getting it over to about, you know, I'd say 85, 90 million in, in revenue and selling off the company. So, yeah, and that in that time, I knew that there was uh, lots of a need in the market for technology that can help retailers and restaurateurs really kind of advance. And uh, after you know, uh, after you know, parting ways with with Revel, decided to stay within the again restaurant retail categories and joined Radiant approximately about seven months ago. I got really excited uh, when I saw the technology and what it can do for retailers and restaurant owners and. Uh, you know, with that, um, I've been here again seven months helping um, work on developing the product to a place where we can really create in-store experiences for retail retailers and restaurateurs and help them really connect with, uh, with, their, with their customers. So uh, it's, it's been a fun journey and it continues to be you know, something that I look forward to uh, helping the kind of the industry uh, flourish and, 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 and use technology to, to connect with their customers better. So what do you think, Bobby, keeps you coming back to the restaurant and, and retail world? What, what is it about it that, that keeps you coming back? Because it's not exactly the, the easiest business, and, and it's certainly a business that's changing on almost a, an hourly basis. You know, I think it's one of the uh, – both industries are in a place where <clears throat> there's a lot of technology choices, uh, but using that technology to actually have an influence in how – you're doing business and be able to get, you know, small business owners, whether it's their first restaurant or first retail store up and running and be able to open up their second and third and fourth. It's really tough. And, you know, I, the reason I keep coming back to it is I love helping, you know, people understand how to use technology to grow their entities. And, and that's why I associate myself with companies that I think can really, you know, have a path forward to help companies uh, flourish. It, it's the greatest feeling to see, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a small business owner, starts a restaurant, grows to the second, third, fourth, fifth, um, you know, entity and, and, and continues to grow. And, and I think technology used correctly has a big play in that. So what, tell everybody a little bit about what Radiant is and, and why you were drawn to, to that company and why you think it was, you know, something important that, that could be additive to the, to the landscape. Yeah, great question. I think I think in the you know again both kind of industries, uh, one of the things um, that you hear a lot is you know retail is starting to really slow down. Restaurateurs are really starting to see most of their orders coming through delivery mechanisms. And although you know part of that's true, you know the, the way that consumers are um, interacting with brands is changing. Uh, but I think the the reason that I got attracted to Radiant is because we actually are able to use our technology. And, and you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, we're cloud digital signage platform. Uh, but what, what we're trying to do with digital signage is take it a step farther and help people create experiences in their locations to create loyalty, to connect better with their customers. And I think using technology like that uh, allows people to actually create more of a loyal base, more of a continuous 
you know, uh, uh, base of people coming into their locations and continue to, to, to grow their entities. So I got attracted to Radiant because I, I believe we can, with our technology, help restaurateurs and, and, and uh, retailers really use uh, a digital signage platform and, you know, take it a little bit of a step farther, you know, change the music in store, uh, put up promos at the appropriate time based on the in-store demographic at that point, be able to push out, um, you know, different specials, if you will. So be able to use it to really bring people back into their store locations. And on top of it, build a little bit of a, of a more loyal following. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, the smart, uh, displays were, were novel, you know, call it five, six years ago. I remember when I first started seeing them and, and now, uh, especially in the, the fast casual universe, it's almost surprising to, to go into somewhere, especially a new build and, and not see them. Has this yeah. been, has this been, you know, does this hold, hold true to the, to the data that you guys are seeing and the trends that you're seeing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think there's two elements to that, by the way, I, I think there's one element of, uh, and we actually, uh, we, we touched on that in, in our new kind of retail report as well, but I think there's two elements that one is actually drawing people in because maybe they don't know exactly what you do, uh, or what you offer. So drawing people in on the street where you have digital signage actually plays into educating, um, consumers in. And then once they're in store, uh, further educating them or interacting with them or giving them, you know, some sort of content that really, um, that, that allows them to be and understand your brand better and be closer to your brand. I think uh, both elements really help uh, draw in the, you know, the, the, right, the right customers and, and keep those customers coming back. I had the opportunity to interview Doug Stevens, who is an extremely uh, popular and accomplished uh, author in the, in the retail space. His last book, Reengineering Retail, is a phenomenal read. Uh, if you guys listening have not, have not read that yet. And he had a quote that, uh, that I read that kind of stuck with me from the other day. Uh, that says that experiences is, I'm going to butcher this, but that experiences um, are the currency of the next hundred years. And I, I, I would be very curious to know, since you guys just did the state of consumer behavior study, you know, what are, what are you seeing that either flies in the face of that or, or supports that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to push out some, some numbers just so, just to, to, to make sure I tell the story. Uh, for, for, for the listeners here, but you know, approximately 68, 70 percent of respondents um, in the in the survey that we did said that an in-store experience um, is either important or very important to them. That's the reason they come back to a brand, because there's a lot of commoditization, commoditization in a lot of different industries, and um, with that, what differentiates you is is how you actually connect with your with your customer and the services that you provide and the experience that you provide in store. So. We weren't surprised to see that, you know, majority of people come back um, because of an in-store experience, but 68% is a pretty big number. So well, that if, was one, one area. If, um, if you think that, about it, I mean, you, to your point, things are being commoditized almost thoroughly in the, in the, retail, um, in yep. the retail world. I mean, Amazon is always going to be your first choice if you just want the next thing or the, the cheapest thing or or whatever. So, I mean, what, what else do you have other than, other than kind of your, your brand and how you can translate that into an experience to get somebody off the couch? Absolutely. No, absolutely. You're, you're totally correct. You're totally correct. And so it's not surprising, but it, but it is, it is, um, you know, one of those things where it makes you really, the light bulb goes off in the sense of like, as a retailer or restaurateur, I really need to focus on this because this is what's going to allow me to flourish in the next few years and, and, and onwards. What were some other numbers that, that kind of popped off the page once, once you were kind of tallying the results? Yeah, I think, I think looking at um, the differences between, well, I'll, I'll tell you the two biggest buckets of why people go to uh, physical locations. The first is to touch products, of course, uh, and feel products and feel the difference of products. And, you know, the second is uh, what we're talking about, which is, you know, really creating an experience and creating an enjoyable shopping experience. And if you take... Uh, you know, males and females and just kind of look at how they look at things uh, a little bit differently here. Uh, you know, males, the shopping experience, you know, trumps anything else. About 44% of males said, you know, that's the most important element of shopping in store. Uh, the second most important element is, is the touch products like we just talked about. About 23% uh, said touching products, feeling products and seeing uh, how, they're, how they're different is important. Now, women are, are, are a little bit different in the sense that uh, they prioritize, you know, the physical presence of products and touching and feeling 
um, by about 45% of women said that, and 35% said they prefer the experience. So no matter how you slice and dice it, you know, uh, seeing products in, in, in real life, touching them, feeling them, and the experience that you get in store, the reason that people are coming back. Uh, and I say over the next few years, we're going to see that the experience trumps even, you know, again, looking at uh, looking and feeling and, and touching products uh, as, as well, because it, it's it's what draws people back to a brand in general. So what what data or what that you guys researched was the most surprising part of this consumer behavior study? I mean, I, I when I when I read the experience thing, that that just clicks. So that, that makes total sense to me. Was there anything that you saw that really you, you had to read it twice and, and you thought was really interesting that that you didn't see coming? You know, I, th- I think um, I think the one thing uh, as we kind of broke down the demographics and and broke down kind of the age groups even. Uh, I think the, the the one thing that really was kind of, you know, surprising to me was when you break down like uh, millennial groups and, and people really age 30 and below, you think just right off the bat, you think, you know, online experience quick. That's all. That's all. I'm, that's the only way I'm going to shop. And actually, the one thing that you realize is that as, uh, you know, millennial groups or, or, or groups that are, you know, under 30 or, are starting to kind of... Uh, basically get into their into their mid 30s and 40s and all that good stuff what you, what you realize is that they're actually shifting their buying experience to be more in store as well due to them really wanting to connect with brands and be being associated with brands that create uh, experiences in store so that was the biggest kind of alarming thing is although one group is 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 buying a certain way or that's a preconceived kind of notion in our head they're really uh moving into uh, kind of a different segment just because of the experience that they receive from restaurant uh, restaurateurs and retailers. So, as someone that's on the front lines, who are you seeing that is that is taking this new data to heart? Like, who do you think is doing a really good job of, of trying to step up their store experience and and trying to stay ahead of this insanely quick kind of shifting sand? Yeah, I think uh, so. There's a bunch of uh, you know small businesses that we try to help mimic some of the experiences that the bigger, uh, bigger entities uh, can afford to do and can, and can create themselves uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so that, that's one area that we really want to help. We want to help the small business owner realize how to create that in-store experience. So we talk to a lot of the small business owners all the time. But I think as we shift into uh, also working with those larger brands and them wanting to connect with their customers better, you know, there's, there's companies like, uh, of course, uh, Mark Wahlberg is closely associated with the company. He's an advisor in the company as well. And, you know, his family owns, um, you know, Wahlburgers. And we we have been over the years helping Wahlburgers create an in-store experience. That's phenomenal. That that allows, you know, the um, the patrons to, to really connect with the brand, uh, whether it's, you know, the social media wall in-store or, you know, seeing a different kind of, you know, promo in-store based on the time of day or having – you know, Mark Wahlberg himself come in and, and say hello to guests or sing them happy birthday. So that, those are all the things that you know, brands are kind of embracing. Wahlberg is a good example of that. Another good example of that, uh, really on the, on the retail front, you know, I think uh, Sephora is doing a, a phenomenal job. You know, the, the music that they use uh, to engage with people, the, all the digital screens that they have in store to be able to engage with, uh, with their clients, be able to educate their clients, be able to talk about new products. Uh, and all of that is, is also compelling. So I think brands, uh, certain brands are, are doing a really good job. And I, and I think um, you know, small business owners are really hungry to, to learn some of the things that the larger brands are thinking in, and, and also kind of use that in their store locations to be able to uh, you know, get, connect more with their, with, their, with their clients. So I'd like to ask you about the halo effect. Um, I, I hear a lot of people talk about, I mean, you have a lot of these direct-to-consumer brands that do a great job of kind of hunt, kill, gather online, uh, but they still can use that data and, and really understand where to pinpoint, locate a store where their customers already are or where they can draw a direct line from their you know avatar customer to a, a certain part of the population um, do, have you guys seen anything in this report or in your kind of day-to-day frontline business that, that sheds a little light on, on kind of the halo effect of having a brick and mortar store? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the, 
I, I'd say, you know, medium sized and above businesses, just because small business, you know, they, they're focused on really running their business day to day. And again, we're helping them use kind of data to, to, to kind of push that forward as well. But I think a lot of the medium brands, uh, you know, and, and, and above are, are really using um, this, that, uh, this type of data to be able to really capture more people to, to come in store. You know, there's a lot of things that we're seeing these days in the sense of uh, you can buy online and pick up in store. You can, if you come in store and you purchase something um, after making an online purchase, they give you more of a percentage off. And I think one of the realizations here is, uh, although, you know, online sales are great, you know, pulling people into a store, being able to have a conversation, be able to show them the other products, be able to associate um, associate that person with, again, your, your total brand uh, helps people buy more of your product and helps you connect better. So uh, one of the things that we've also seen, on, uh, especially on the retail front, uh, is retailers that, you know, have people actually come into their stores versus buying online I've seen an average of about 35% um, average ticket size being increased by them people coming in store. Uh, so they're buying more, uh, and they're buying more because they're they're connecting more with the brand and they're seeing other products and they're and they're able to you know uh, talk to someone about uh, their products being sustainable or whatever whatever the case is that 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 brand is all about. Being able to teach and educate that customer uh, in store uh, is it's important. Have you guys started looking at augmented reality or kind of that next level of, of digital customer experience? Or do you think we're still, you know, a little far away from that? Or have you guys started thinking about that? I think, uh, you know, and I know artificial intelligence is a buzzword. Uh, I, I think AI in the next few years um, will start to be one of the areas where you can actually use the data that you're collecting and be able to really personalize an experience even farther uh, with your customer. I think AR and VR also comes, uh, you know, is a part of that. But I think it comes after people really adopt AI in general terms, uh, as far as me being able to kind of personalize an experience when someone's walking into my store. Then when they're in my store, how do I take uh, how do I take the experience there? And if I don't have, maybe I don't have all products in the store, I can use AR and VR to be able to create maybe a product wall of future products or products that are not typically in store, or maybe a customization of a product that I can order. Uh, so I think it's absolutely going to be, you know, I think in the next two to four years, we're going to see AI really used to create those personalized experiences. And, you know, closely thereafter, uh, AR and VR be used uh, uh, to be able to further that experience in store, to be able to further the product lines that a lot of stores carry and be able to, again, create more of a connection with uh, with customers. And my question with the AR, VR, is, is that going to be a bigger driver to keep people at home? Like, is the technology, is the point going to be, and I don't know if there's a right answer, is the point going to be to make the digital experience so good that you don't need to go into the store? Or will we be able to make store experiences so incredible that you'll almost pay admission just to get into the store? Like, I'm, I'm really curious to see, maybe it's, it's probably, the answer is probably it's a combination of both, but I'm really intrigued to see kind of which road that takes. Yeah, I think it's definitely a combination of both. I think online will always, you know, online sales and e-commerce will always be there. But I think part of the the you know, quote unquote like secret sauce of AR and VR is is people actually visualizing and without like touching the product, visualizing that uh, in in a store environment where they can see full 360 views and can can actually experience the rest of that store environment playing into the product that they're also looking at. So I think a lot of stores actually we see we see Adidas do this pretty well where they have a bunch of conceptual shoes that are about to come out. Uh, and in-store, they don't provide them online, but in-store, if you go into, the, in, into that little back area that they have created as a AR, VR area, you can actually look at the shoes, you can try them on, you can, you can experience it. And that's something that you know, can be done to a certain level online, but that full experience and being able to uh, conceptualize you know, wearing that shoe or you know, how that shoe looks on you and all that good stuff, <clears throat> is a part of it's always going to be a part of the in-store experience in my mind so what so in today so let's bring it back to present day what do you think the most important technology uh investment that a that a let's use sounds like your sweet spot is that small to mid-size business what do you think is the absolute price of admission and the most important thing that that these companies can invest in from a technology standpoint um, I think from a technology standpoint, the biggest thing that can be invested in is uh, is 
creating an experience in store. How you create that initially, though, is really learning who your customer is. So I think one of the things that we help our restaurateurs and retailers uh, do initially is you know be able to help, help gather the data, conceptualize what that looks like, be able to make decisions on who their customers are and who they want their customers to be continuously, and then use you know a platform like Radiant to be able to create that in-store experience, to be able to connect with customers, and tie that in also to their, if they have an e-commerce or online view, tie that in. Because I think one of the things that you know we're realizing a lot is uh, you know, a lot of customers will look at a look at a product online, but if you have that draw to pu- pull them into the store, and then once they're in store, educate them more, and then make them <laughs> have them feel and touch your product. That's where you're able to create that, you know, kind of that lifelong customer. That's where you're able to kind of connect with that person and, and the brand. So I think uh, first gathering that data, using that data with a platform like Gradient to be able to push that experience in store and lo- in location. So let's let's change directions a little bit, and I want to talk a little bit about just your kind of entrepreneurial, you know, serial entrepreneur streak. I, I need to understand what company you uh, you first built when you were nine years old, and then, <laughs> and then I'd love for you to take it to, to present day and talk about your biggest kind of struggle or, or your biggest success when it came to kind of raising seed money for, for Radiant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So when, when I was, uh, when I was nine, uh, you know, I would, I would gather my allowance and, and figure out what in my mind at that point, you know, I, I did a bunch of things, uh, from, you know, picking the, picking the peaches off the peach tree and trying to sell them in front of our house. But I think the first like quote unquote business of my mind was, you know, my, my, my sister had a bunch of friends. She was younger, three, four years younger than me. And, uh, they would come to the house a lot. And as they would come to the house a lot, you know, they would always talk about, you know, different products that the other other had that the other wanted. So what I did, you know, uh, at, that, at that point is um, there's, a, there's a company and I, they're still around, but it was a company called Oriental Trading Company, a bunch of chotskis and like products for kids. And, and so I used my allowance uh, to buy a bunch of products and I created uh, really a, a garage retail store in my, in, in my parents' garage. And they would come over and it would be, you know, a, a small kind of retail environment. Uh, and that's that's where I kind of first started to really fall in love with the retail and business and, and, and really start to yeah, at that point, you really you don't fully understand, but you start to really fall in love with and, and have a passion for uh, for the retail side. And that's 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 what created um, a mentality in my mind that I you know want to be associated with retail restaurants and and just meeting people in locations but I, I love that i have this little picture in my mind of you like carnival barking at, at your sister's friends when they're when they're coming over so so were they actually were did she keep these friends or did, did the parents stop letting them come over because they would they would, <laughs> they would leave a little lighter than when they they showed up no you know it was kind of that network effect uh you know one week it would be five people the next week it would be 10 15 it was it was just an interesting thing and these products were harder, uh, harder to get. And if you add two, three bucks, uh, uh, and you can, you can, uh, use your allowance or, or what your parents gave you, you know, if it was one, it's something that turned into more of kind of a network effect. And in the end, I'll tell you our best month ever, we had, you know, sales of 2,500 bucks, which what? is pretty, pretty big <laughs> at that age, at least <laughs> your, your parents are trying to get a loan from you on, on the weekends. <laughs> so they can go out. <laughs> so, so let's take that. Let's take that to present day. Talk to me about the struggles or successes. I mean, raising money. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing a lot of that in my business all the time for for different projects. So, I'd love to hear your perspective of kind of the successes and the failures of of, of raising seed money, um, especially in kind of the retail and technology space, which is just so volatile. Tell tell me about that. Yeah, I think um, so. Raising money is always tough. Um, because, you know, you, you have to attract, you know, people that really have uh, and understand the vision that you have for creating a company that really uh, solves a lot of problems for, for, for the customers that it's serving. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, at Radiant, uh, after joining Radiant um, and, and looking at the product, and one of the reasons, by the way, I joined Radiant is because it, it, it's one of those companies that I, that I know is going to be able to change the face of what we do to help restaurants uh, and retailers really interact with their, you know, with their clients. So in initially uh, even getting attracted to the company, I knew we had something big and, and, you know, advancing the platform to be able to even create more of these experiences easily for small business owners. Um, and, and so with that, you know, as we're going to, uh, you know, launch our first fund 
and, and raise money. One of the big noticeable things was we, because we, I particularly, and a lot of the team members understand restaurants and retail, understand how we can help kind of progress um, their, you know, both revenues, but also kind of the, their, their loyalty from, from customers. We were able to really um, talk to our investors and, and we actually initially had more investors than we could take in in the round. Uh, but we wanted to work with with the investors that actually had a retail focus or restaurant focus and really understood the industries because our biggest biggest goal is not actually raising money. It's how do we take that money to really create a platform that's as easy for a small business owner as it is an enterprise customer, really deploying the experience in store. So that vision that we have, and, and this, this this is one of the visions that we really have, is the same way that you know people are getting their phones these days, iPhones, Android phones, downloading 5, 10, 15 apps. And, you know, it's, it's really their personalized phone because the apps can be different on every single phone. We're doing that with our product, right? You, you get our product, you unwrap it, you put it in, you quickly download five or 10 or 15 of our marketplace apps, and you've created the custom experience in, in your location easily and, you know, are able Scalable to connect with your customers Scalable mass customization. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, for us, it's been, uh, you know, to answer your question, it's been, it's been easier just because our focus has been raising money. It's been how do we help advanced restaurants, restaurateurs and retailers um, by creating a platform that creates better experiences. So what would you say is, is the biggest challenge to getting people to understand how important mass customization is in the retail and restaurant business? Because in my mind, it's, it's everything, right? There's a reason why Chipotle exploded, right? There's a reason why Cava in, on the East Coast is exploding. There's a reason why... These play, people like getting what they want. Even going back to Subway, right? Like that's there's a reason why those things worked. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I, I think there's two different uh, thought processes here. One is, um, you know, for our technology and, and and even not our technology, but just in general, creating an in-store experience um, is is a new like it's still kind of in that early adopter phase. So people that are actually adopting it are the ones that we'll see, you know, the benefits now, but also a lot more in the future. We talked to two different types of customers. The customers that say, oh, I don't think I want to invest in any more technology. And the customers that say, I want to invest in the right technology to be able to connect with my customers. So I'm around in two years. And also I open up my second or third or fifth or tenth location. So I think uh, being in those two groups of customers, the ones our biggest challenge has been, uh, how do we get those customers that think, if I spend hundred dollars right now, that's hundred dollars too much. To really realize, if you, if you don't use that hundred dollars to be able to advance your store, whether it's our technology or other technology that's that's useful for them, you're be chasing it. Forever. Um, you're not going to be around. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be yeah. that hundred dollars is going to turn into a hundred thousand dollars if if you exactly if you let it pass you by. Well, Bobby, you've already exactly. been so helpful and and gracious with your time. I want to hit you with a couple just kind of quick knee jerk kind of bullet point questions. But before I do that, would you let people know? Kind of how they can connect with you, how they can find out more about what you guys are doing. Uh, if, if you if you want people to reach out on social or LinkedIn or or your website, let people know how they can interact with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Radiant.com is our website. You can connect with us there. It's R A Y D I A N T dot com. I'm also very easy to get hold of. Bobby at Radiant.com. Would love to, to to hear from folks that are interested. Uh, creating in-store experiences, or, or just to just to learn more about what what our findings were in this report. Yeah, and and we'll link to that report also. It's got a ton of good data. Uh, I would I would love for you to touch one more time on on who you think is either doing an excellent job of using technology to create experiences, or point to an example of of somebody that could have improved their business by employing this technology and and just. Uh, kind of maybe dropped the ball, didn't, didn't, didn't invest wisely or, or took their eye off the ball? Yeah, I think, uh, so Wahlburgers, great example, again, creating a really good in-store experience. They're taking it further from being you know, a really a, a burger joint to really being uh, somewhere that you can connect with, with locals and, and really it, it's a fun atmosphere. And so I think they do a phenomenal job there. I think there's a, there's a bunch of retailers and restaurateurs like TGI Friday's uh, is a good example of a brand that did not kind of advance their in-store experience. And you see them, you know, uh, you know closing locations here and there. Uh, but in general terms, I think uh, learning from the Wahlburgers and, and creating that in-store experience is what lets people 
kind of keep flourishing and, and, and growing. Are there any technologies, we touched on AR, VR, but are there any technologies that are lacking in physical retailers that could lead to a negative customer experience that you think need to be disrupted? Um, I think uh, I, th I, I think the biggest part is it's going to be different for every business. I think some businesses have a lot of spare tools. I think bringing that all together in one place and being able to tie it all together to create, again, an experience is the part that most uh, most restaurants restaurateurs and retailers need to focus on because I think that's the future. But other than that, I think each, each entity is a little bit different. Uh, but working with you know, a platform like ours, you bring it all together and create that experience. What are your thoughts on the ultimate kind of Frankenstein monster of, of in-store technology, Amazon Go, and, and their new um, full-fledged grocery store that I haven't even seen yet? What, what are your thoughts on kind of technology metamorphosized into, into this uh, full living, breathing kind of techn technological store? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think, I think there, it's a different model, but I, but I think that model is one of the models that will work um, for customers that look, are looking for speed and convenience. I think that taking that model, that, that pay, you know, payment strategy or quick payment strategy and advancing it with more, you know, education in store or, um, you know, music that you create in the store or, or whatever you're trying to get your brand to do, uh, taking that payment technology and furthering it with other types of technology that come together, um, I think is going to be important. I think Amazon goes on to something, uh, but I think there's, there's more there. There's more that they can do to kind of tie things in and, and create more of an experience in location. Do you think that Amazon Go is just kind of a consumer behavior study that, that they're really not worried about selling you a bag of chips? They really just want to understand the why behind you wanting those bag of chips and, and how often you want chips and how they can just have chips show up to your door. Oh, absolutely. I think I think that's the biggest part of how they tie things in. I think even, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, they bought Whole Foods a couple of years ago as well. And that's that's one of the things that, that you see. You see now some of the items that you buy at Whole Foods, you have you know suggestions on if you buy that bag of chips, hey, buy this in bulk and get it shipped to you. So I think it's absolutely the data and how they use the data. And I think Amazon Go is a, a project. I think it's I think it's to a point, though, a project that uh is on the consumer side, you know, taking off, but is that tying into a bigger initiative at the Amazon level? I think so. Yeah, I agree with you as well. So I've heard it said, this is the last question that I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you run. I, I've heard it said that Facebook, Instagram owns all of our, they know kind of who we are. They own our personal data. Amazon knows what we buy. They know our kind of consumer behavior data if there's a company that can kind of meld those two, uh, that's going to be the next massive disruptor. Uh, have, you, have you ever given that, that notion any thought? No, I completely agree with you. I think tying that in, I think uh, using data to tie that in is, is absolutely essential, and, and that's the next disruptor for sure. I totally agree. Well, Bobby, this has been so much fun. I, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and kind of nerd out with me about retail for a few minutes. Uh, Likewise, and, Adam. And just, just, just want to acknowledge you for, for taking time and sharing your knowledge with our listeners. Absolutely. Thank you again.